All right, so um, this is our, our simulator tool, and we're going to start here with a, a typical atrial flutter. So if you want to load this up. If you want to hit x-ray. Oh, boy. You see the wire should go in first. And if you want, I can describe what's going on, too. Am I missing the... Just like this. I wonder if I cannulated the bladder by accident or something. Keep going. You might have to keep You're stepping on it. I am. Do 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 do. Start. Start with the flow back. Just that quick. Okay. One more flow. This is the part that's been detrimental. Okay. Here it comes. Oh, here we go. Hell oh, yeah. All right. So this is a wire. So, so, so this is a, a flutter ablation, and um, we will typically use a long sheath to help stabilize the ablation catheter. So I guess this is just putting a wire up into the right atrium for our sheath. And then, I don't know. Did I lose that little thingy? This is your sheet. Oh, yeah, here's it. I think I could use this. Ha! I'll be your scrub tech here. So here's our coronary sinus catheter again. And here's a multipolar that's kind of wrapped around the tricuspid annulus. And I think, so if I go LAO, so now I'm going to whack my shins as I move the II. <laughs> Um, and you can see that this is kind of coming, pretend that this is coming around the valve. So this is the septum, and this is the lateral wall of the right atrium. And this is the coronary sinus, so coronary sinus ostium, and then out here would be the mitral valve. Apparently, we do not, unfortunately, have the cool 3D multicolor mapping. Uh, that part of the simulator didn't work, so this is going to be kind of old school. This is how you used to do it. Okay, the wire's coming back out there. Oops, there's the wire. There go. Here we'll put the wire up into the brain. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh. Is the left subclavian? Up, up into the left subclavian, down into some, I don't think there's a vessel that goes there. Down in the arm. <laughs> there we go. And we now we'll thrombose pan. that guy's fistula. Actually, okay. We can't uh, actually pan over there. <laughs> oh, we can. So here. Want to do some exploring? What? Oh, no, this is really pretty much uh, fishy. Okay. Fishy. Okay. Fishy. Not fishy. Fishy. So there's a sheath in here somewhere that it's invisible to me. Should be coming up. Pull it back and then advance it again. Gotta hold the wire. All right. All right. Here we go. Ah, there it is. Oh, look at that. All right. So now we've got this, this sheath that's going to help stabilize the catheter. This is LAO, so... We're kind of pointing down towards the coronary sinus ostium, and then we'll take this guide wire out. <laughs> Sound effects are important. It's a long wire. It's an exchange length. Okay. The catheter. And then. Yeah. Here comes the ablation catheter. Do, 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 do. <whistles> la, la, la. There it is. Uh -huh. hmm. uh, only you. Okay. So now this we've got this in here. This is our sort of LAO. This is probably more LAO than I would normally go. So we'd Let's say go to 30, which is sort of a typical like valve on view. Okay. And here are electrograms. So oh, this is really kind of cool. So these, the, these are our signals um, from that multipolar catheter here. So you can see that it gets progressively later as you come down this way, 
progressively later as we come down that way. So that's what this is showing us. And these correspond to the flutter waves on the EKG. This is our coronary sinus catheter. I don't know which pole this is, but you can see that it's later than anything. This is all right atrium, and this comes later. So this is part of our activation sequence showing that the left atrium comes after anything in the right atrium. And so now what we will do, so, so the, the target for flutter, if the valve is like this and the circuit's coming like that, is to make a cauterize a line that comes from the, across the tricuspid valve, sort of at like the six o'clock position. So we just need to cauterize a line and come straight back. So if we're looking end on into the valve, we're gonna stick our catheter out into the ventricle this way and then drag it back as we burn and hope to create a block, a line of block here. So, so we'll try to get a tricuspid signal here. And actually from here, if oh. you want to switch to LAO and RAO, then let me know. Um, what just happened there? Okay. All right, so now that signal at the bottom is the ablator, and you can see it's all ventricle. So that is out in the ventricle. And if we come back a little bit, we should eventually get to a point where we're recording atrial and ventricular signal. It's a little, it's kind of the tactile thing is a little different here, but. All right, so there we can see that we're kind of getting a little a big V and a little A. We're down in that area, so this might be, be a, good place to a start. reasonable place to start. Okay, so I'm going to leave this screen here. And these are your power settings. So, so power typically, let's say, we'll, if we're using a, we've got different size catheters. So there's the four millimeter tip, there's eight millimeter tip, there's irrigated depending on what we're doing. So for flutter, I usually use an eight just because it's a bigger hammer and there's a lot of tissue down there. So we'll set it at. 70 watts, let's say, and an eight millimeter and a billion seconds. Um, okay. Okay. So now go back. So we're on ablation. So now we're on ablation. So we're just going to turn that on. And those uh, three at the bottom tell us power. So it kind of ramps up on the yellow towards peak. Impedance will go down a little bit with ablation as you heat up the tissue. And then the temp is red. So if you get, um, we try to keep the temperature below, let's say 55 to 60. If you get too hot, um, two things can happen. One is you can boil the blood and that creates clots, um, which is a bigger problem if you're in the left atrium. The other thing is that if you get too hot, you can create steam that actually occurs in deep in the tissue. And if that steam bubble continues to expand, you can perforate. So. It's called a steam pop. Uh, that's another thing we try to avoid. So we'll come here and we'll just kind of drag this thing back along this line. I don't know exactly how to tell where we are now. It seems to be all ventricle. So here's atrium again. Do, 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 do. If we had the 3D mapping, you'd be able to see right where you are on the line. So then eventually we'll keep pulling back and it's going to drop down into the inferior vena cava. So we will maneuver our line back around. This is, okay. Oh, whoa. How that? I have to go to a different screen. Oh, oh, I see. So you're stopped now. Now I don't know why I don't have a signal there. Weird. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Okay, so we'll come on here and see what happens. Okay, going back to the ablation screen. Do, do. Oh, no. Back on ablation. Back 
I don't know how this game decides when you win. Do, do. So this is about the time that Sally's going to say, come on, what is your problem? <laughs> Have you ever done this before? Yeah, I figured as much. <laughs> Okay, I'll take your word for it. Okay, having never used this. So we're gonna, we're gonna stop All right, here. so we're gonna decide that that catheter is not the right shape, and we're gonna. One of the, the sometimes these flutters are really straightforward. If that tissue down in that isthmus is nice and smooth, then you can drag the catheter back and it's fine. A lot of people, it's really ridged, and they can have these big muscle bands, and you can burn and burn and doesn't touch it. And so um, they can be really frustrating. So I don't know if this is designed as a frustrating game or not. <laughs> so this one has a shorter reach. So you're OK. All right, so we'll come back on here. So we're back in the isthmus. So, I gotta go to this other so we'll see if maybe getting come down on in on a, one of those little ridgy things helps us. Do, 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 la, la, la. La, la. So there's a lot more that popped down into the IVC. As this is a lot more x-ray than we would normally have to use if we had our um, 3D mapping system because we could fall where the catheter was uh, without x-ray. Are we on or not? Yeah, we're on. We are on ablation. <laughs> It does actually get more fun than this. There we go. Okay. So so that, that terminated it. So now, now what we're recording is, whoa, what happened to our little thingies? Our vitals. Um, so, OK, that's fine. Now if I can figure out how to use this pointer again. It's like all, there we go. OK, so, so now these, these poles of the catheter are kind of up here, and this is where the sinus node is. So we would expect to see those first now that we're in sinus. So here's the P wave. Now, we've converted it to sinus, but we don't know that we're done because we don't know that we have complete block in that line down on the valve. So that's the next thing we have to test. And so the way we'll do that is to pace from here and see what our activation looks like. Because if we've got block, then the conduction should only be this way, and we should see kind of a straight line. If we've still got conduction through here, then we're going to see those wave fronts collide and meet. So if you can, so, so this is CS pacing. And it's, it's kind of hard to see this, but but you can see that this part, this middle part is still the latest. It's earlier here and it's earlier here. So it means that even though we terminated the tachycardia, we still got conduction that's able to come through the bottom and collide towards the top. So that means we're not done. Going <sighs> back on ablation. Going back on ablation. <laughs> now we can't. Um, Ablate. Normally, what we would do here would be just to ablate during pacing so we could see the minute we were done, but apparently. We, can't. we are right now. Oh, we can actually do that. Actually All right. right now. Okay. So now what we want to do is keep cooking that tissue down there. Do, 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 do. Well, there's a double potential. That's always good to see. Double potential means that's, that area's got sort of local block. 
and it dropped into the IVC again. So we would we would stop blading and then wait until we get back in position. I don't know if we're in position or not. Okay. Okay. So coming back on ablation. Do do do. Do do. Close. This would also be the time where I'd whine and say, can you change those reds to something else? I can't really see that red very well. <laughs> no, I don't have my lead glasses on because this is going to be all fluoroless. Boink. And it dropped down again. Normally what we'll do is look for look for big meaty signals. Do, 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 do. Oh, I thought we were on. All right, go ahead and Me to go. That's all doubles. There's a loss in there. Yeah. I don't know. We may want to go back to that other catheter with more reach. Okay. Stop. Stop. Okay, go ahead. I'm just kind of glad that this simulator doesn't whine and say, ow, that hurts. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Can we get to the, uh, can we show block, isthmus block? Yeah. Um I wanted to show them what the difference in the yeah. e, e gram was. I can't. Um, you can't do it. Take to, uh, you can switch to RA too. 